Uh, I forgot to, you asked me to share a couple of notes about homeschooling my son. Yes. And I, I, while we have the parents present, I just wanted to um, share a couple of ideas. Uh, first, um, I, I have an elder son that you have not met. And he is, uh, he is a, uh, a, uh, a surgeon. He's a chief of surgery at a major uh, medical facility um, during this COVID period. <clears throat> he likes to be private, so I don't talk about him too much. And uh, of course, my daughter is an educator, and she was at the honor retreat this year with my granddaughter. And uh, you've met my son, who is um, second year law school. He, he, after first year, he became the editor of, uh, of the law review. And uh, my, my son, who's the attorney, um, I homeschooled him seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. Tenth grade, he did hybrid, some homeschool, some, full, some brick and mortar. And then twelfth grade, he did full brick and mortar. So we went through homeschool, hybrid, and then <clears throat> brick and mortar with him. And, and he majored in college in English. And uh, so... Uh, how and then you know he went to college and got into law school and so forth. But but what were the keys to helping him to understand how to use to the homeschooling to his advantage? That's what I wanted to share with you. <clears throat> Before I introduced him to the subjects and and we went through the school district had a homeschooling program that was accredited, and if we signed up for it, they sent us the books. For free so every year he would get a shipment of books that he would use throughout the year and i don't know if that's uh possible but that's how we got the accreditation through our local school district i wanted to share that with you <clears throat> even if you teach outside of that curriculum or in addendum to that curriculum you can incorporate the accreditation if you're in a school district that offers that i just wanted to share that as an idea but the things that I taught him before I got into the subject matter were how to study first. Because if you just give them the, the, the materials and you don't teach them how to study, they have to, it's kind of like um, trying to fly a plane and build it at the same time. And so uh, I felt it was important for him to understand how to study. So I'm going to give you some suggestions on the approach that I used. I didn't just teach him math. I taught him the history of math. Where does the number zero come from? Because in Roman times, if you look at Roman numerals, you'll notice there's no zero. So where did that come from? Where did the number system itself come from and what are its fallacies? Why is negative one times negative one, one? You have less than something times, you have less than nothing times less than nothing, and when you multiply them, you get something. How do you take nothing and then get something? And similarly, you have one thing, an apple, and you multiply it times negative one, the apple disappears, but you haven't, you haven't multiplied it times anything that exists. How does that happen? And then I told him about the Pythagorean. I'm talking to kids, be, uh, patient with me, please. I'm talking to parents at this moment. I realize that. If you look at the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and you put one, one squared is one, one squared is one, but the hypotenuse is not the square root of two, it's something else. And so therefore I told them the foundation of math itself is shaky. Never forget this as you, because this goes into computers, it goes into financials, it goes into all of, you know, you understand what, I, what I'm saying is I taught him how to look at these things um, from a very fundamental uh, basic basis. I taught him the history of history before I taught him history. What is the history of history? And how is it used sometimes even as a weapon? I taught him this. So he would have critical analytical skills in his approach to the information that he was digesting. I, taught, I didn't teach him English. I taught him what logic was. I taught him what semantics were, were. I taught him what syntax is. I taught him the structural aspects of English and language in all languages before I taught him English. Uh, and I also taught him the limitations of English, that, that, that English and language get to a point where it cannot express something like love. And I, I said to him, all of the books 
in the libraries of the world are filled, uh, uh, the, the, the great libraries are filled with books on love, and there are people who are writing books on love right now, and there will be people in the future who will forever write on love. So where, why is it that there are so many words about love, and then when we look around sometimes, people don't understand it? Why is that? Okay. Um, <clears throat> what is the origin of the alphabet in English? Not just the alphabet, but what, where does it come from, and why do we use it? I taught him about, this is before I taught him English, I taught him about sub, subtext, how to read what the, word, the, the, the language is not saying, how to read in between the lines. I learned this when I was at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, how to read in between the lines, because in Shakespeare's time, there were no copyrights. So Shakespeare, through iambic pentameter, how the meter sets gave instructions to his actors that were invisible to people who were just listening to it. Because in those days, you could go to a play, listen to it, remember it, and go perform it yourself. There was no way to protect the author. And so he very secretly wrote instructions to his actors in the way that the meter of the poetry is. And so there's something that goes on underneath language. Uh, I, I, taught, I taught him what psych sociology was and psychology. These are not core academics, but they are very important to the human personality. And finally, uh, you know, I taught him about their, their exotic academics that are not for everybody, but some people, for example, I have a, a student who is a PhD astrophysicist. And so uh, this is the study of the cosmos and stars and how the, the nature of the universe is. Now, you may not be able to get a high, a high paying job with that, but nonetheless, it is an area of exploration that helps you to understand your world and how small we are in it with regards to the universe and how small our little tiny minds are in terms of the universe and have perspective of the importance of being present in the universe as a being. So uh, I just share those notes. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not seeing that kind of discussion in the curriculum, but I, I tell you that this was very valuable to my son when we began to engage the academics because he came to it with that kind of this perspective, this critical analytical skill. So he was learning the academics and analyzing it at the same time. And he came out, you know, really having a, a different kind of understanding than, uh, than, than someone who was just, uh, uh, you know, studying core, core academics. And he may not be the, the best and the brightest but if you have to work for him, you'll enjoy it because <laughs> he's, he's a good guy, you know. And so I just share that uh, th these insights having, you know, taken uh, a child through all that process and watched him evolve. And, you know, he's a, he's a loving person. I'm, I'm looking at you, but when I look over my computer, he's right there, right? And so he's a good family guy, and uh, we have really benefited greatly the bond of homeschooling can be more profound than academics. It can be a bond that is everlasting and multi-generational. So uh, again, thank you for my time. Sean, I see you. And, uh, and if you can hear me, I don't know if you can hear me, but I want you to remember the conversation I had in your home about this and look how big it's getting. Look how, look at it. Uh, so thank you again. And uh, I'll talk to you soon.